Oh, hi there, Internet. Good morning, afternoon, whatever the uh, time might be where you are. Today's game uh, is a lovely title known as Air Mech, as in Air Mechanic, Air Mech, whatever. It's like Transformers, so you've got like, I'm in a helicopter now, and then, but you've got planes, and they transform into like walking versions. You'll see me do it in a sec, I hope. And you um, make, see that's me making stuff, you can make tanks and soldiers and things. And uh, you make lots of them and you run around and you fight the other guys and you'll, you'll see, it, it makes sense. And you win by destroying the other fortress. Anyway, I wanted to, to ask the question, why are Christians so judgmental? And not all Christians, I should be fair, a lot of Christians I know are lovely people. I mean, I am one of them. I try not to be a jerk myself, but but why why are they so why are they such ugh, like why do they make you feel so bad and guilt trip you all the time? That's what I wanted to talk about, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that. And I think I I think it, it's if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, you probably do, but like you may have come across people of faith or of a religious nature who are very uptight. They want to correct you or judge you for your life or specific behaviors in your life. Um, or they need to comment on social issues and be the, be the moral police of society. And that whole, that whole thing of Christians being, yeah, see, I've transformed and then they transformed and then we fight and the gray base is a neutral one, which neither of us have taken over yet. Yeah. And you shoot stuff and it, it's fun. Uh, nearly dead. Damn. Anyway, and that, that whole the whole thing of Christians needing to correct you, even if you're not a Christian. Right. I I don't think that's how Christians were in the early church or even in the New Testament. Not 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 quite. Uh, and I don't think even originally the Jews were supposed to be. That way, I don't think they really were, to be honest. Um, I mean, just look at the teachings of Jesus. Like, there's no one in their right mind can say that the teachings in the Bible aren't good. Like, so Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's a great teaching. And the Ten Commandments are like almost common sense. In the Old Testament, you know, don't steal, don't kill. Um, honor your God. What is it? What is it? Don't lie, you know. And, and Jesus lived an example and taught his followers to have compassion, to forgive, have mercy. You know, like, that's all good stuff. But then many in the community of faith today, what we might call religious folk, if you like, uh, are known to be judgmental. I mean, they do, they do surveys of this sort of thing all the time. And apparently... Christians are known as just being anti-sex, anti-gay, gen and generally just judgmental, not fun people. Maybe kind of backwards. Uh, and argumentative, you know, like all the old debates they put up in the papers every now and then, like creation versus evolution. Um, Christian group speaks out against such and such political party or political bill or whatever. And there's this trend, this strand. Oh, look at me go. Dueling got him. See, so you got to fight the other Amex. And so there's this trend of moral policeness, and I don't, I don't love it. Um, but I used to think I had to be the moral police and correct my friends, and I don't, I don't think the same way now. But I think there's a, there's a lot of really, it makes a lot of sense when you trace history, like how how Christians or how the church could get to that point. And do you like the music in this game? It's made by Frontline Assembly. They did, the developers of this game worked with them. And this is like the game soundtrack. It's really cool. I believe Frontline Assembly did the music for Quake as well. Was it Quake or Unreal? I think it's Unreal Tournament. Anyway, it's amazing music and I love it. Anyway, so we take up this, this authoritarian view, and if I go right back to history, I'll start with the Greeks. If you know um, a little bit of history, you'd know the Greek Empire was 
you know, big. Um, but what was special about it was Alexander the Great's um, view, his his motivation. He's he's he was trying to, in a way, create world peace by by conquering people and then giving them the same culture. If they had the same culture, the same values, the same laws, the same dress, you know, the same calendar, the same language, then they wouldn't fight each other. They just they, they wouldn't need to fight each other because they, they kind of have too much in common. And to a large extent, that actually kind of worked. Like, he's, he, he intended to literally conquer the entire world. He inherited an empire from his father, Philip, King Philip, um, but then just went much further with it. And it was incredible. And, like, the, the Roman Empire was built on the back of the Greek Empire. Anyway, so that, that process of conquering people and giving them your culture was known as Hellenization for the Hellenes, the, the Greeks how do you say, Hellenes, Helens, whatever it is forgive me, those who actually know um, I never know how to pronounce that word, I just call it Hellenization uh, and I think it, I think that's stuck around I think the idea still lives lives on today, actually um, oh, dropping a few tanks, defending the base yeah, I think the idea still lives on today in a lot of us that we, this idea of conquest that we need to that you need to conquer uh, but then even in the um, in the Jewish tradition the so God's covenant with Abraham uh, back in the Old Testament was that God would bless all the world like all the world no qualifications through Abraham's descendants um, and so for the Jews like they were to be God's source of salvation and revelation to the rest of the world but over time they became very exclusivist uh, and almost isolationist not wanting to mix with the outside world at all you know don't marry foreigners don't yada 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 um, which is good for keeping your your religion pure but not good for sharing your faith with and not good for sharing the blessings of God with the outside world so I think that Jewish exclusivism and the Hellenization stuck so that like the church Christianity started out it was seen as a Jewish sect during the time of the Roman Emperor Roman Empire excuse me um, and so I, I think I think it continued on throughout the Empire and then like the early church wasn't even much of a church it was more of a movement of groups of people meeting in houses and praying and people like the Apostle Paul and the disciples would go around and teach and preach and share the gospel with those who didn't know but it wasn't it wasn't instituted it wasn't officialized or officiated um, but in the 300s in the fourth century AD things started to change there was this Emperor Constantine and uh, it's a really interesting story he apparently had a vision where his army had Christ's Jesus name on their shields and they won the battle and so then Constantine goes and writes was JC just the letters JC I think on the shields paints them on the shields of his soldiers against oh I'm so sorry I don't even remember you could you could look it up it's easy to find very accessible um, but he fought his battle may have been against the Germans not the Parthians it was against some Western barbarians and they and he won the battle and he thought that because he, he thought he won the battle because he painted Jesus' name on his shields because one of the one of the core ideas of ancient religions is that your God helps you fight battles and make your make your life a better life, right? And if you please your God, your life gets better. And if you win battles, your God therefore has defeated the God of your enemies as well as your army defeating your enemy's army. Therefore your God is the stronger God. Right, so Constantine had had the name of Jesus painted on his shield, so he thought that the Christian God had given him the victory, so he converted to Christianity. And, and from that point on, Christianity was given a measure of a measure of political credibility, which it hadn't really had before. Before that, it was more just just a sect. Uh, but that that wasn't the biggest thing either. Um, it became legal from that point, but then later on. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but then later on in, I believe it was 370 AD, there was another emperor by the name of Gratian and he 
converted to Christianity, he dropped the title of Pontifex Maximus, which is head of the Roman religion, and became head of the Christian church. And so now, for the first time, the Christian church and the state had been fused together. And this was a this was a new thing because Gratian said not only is Christianity legal, it's now the official religion of the empire. Uh, and something really interesting happened because up to then Christians were still persecuted. They were a minority, misunderstood, distrusted minority. That's a lot of power generators down. I've got a lot of money. I need to spend that. Um, this game is still in beta. It's free off Steam. Um, you should go play it. It's lots of fun. Play it just for the soundtrack, for crying out loud. I love this music. Uh, but, but up to that point, Christians have been persecuted. But I think almost to the day that that Gratian made it the official religion, Christians started persecuting non-Christians. And f like that's how we got the Roman Catholic Church, this episode with Gratian. And the empire split 15 years later, and so you had the Western Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox. And we still have those two institutions today. But I think if you combine that Roman situation with the Greek Hellenistic Hellenization, combined with Greek exclusivism, sorry, Jewish exclusivism, isolationist attitudes, combine that together and you get you get this idea that that Christianity is the official religion of the West, it's the legitimate thing and other people are to be corrected or you know, that's that's the root of it. And then you come to North America in the 18th century. So you've had Protestantism a few hundred years earlier, but in the 1700s, you've got the Methodists in England, and then you've got like John Wesley and John Edwards heading up the evangelical movement in the 18th, in the 1700s. And it all combines together to create this kind of Christianity where it thinks it needs to tell non-Christians to live by Christian values so and I, I think I kind of picked this up as a kid I uh, really regret it now for being a bit of a jerk to my friends sometimes to be honest because um, they don't have my beliefs why should they live according to my values and we we tended we tend to in evangelical circles make try and force the, the world who hasn't accepted Christ to live by Christian values we're putting the, the cart before the horse people need to accept Christ before they can be expected to even care about Christian values um, yeah like I, I think a lot of the motivations of evangelicalism are quite kind of noble you know like we want people to know God and they're active in in communicating that sometimes they're annoying in communicating it but they're active um, and another thing with Christianity is that, sorry with evangelical Christianity is especially after World War Two, people started to get this idea that we should interact with society on all levels. You know, we want to. What's the phrase? We want to. We want everything to reflect the nature of God, all aspects of society. And that, when you put it like that, that's kind of noble or kind of nice, I guess. You know, like if you think God's a loving, compassionate God, then you'd want all parts of your life to look like a loving, to reflect your loving, compassionate God. But then, but then what happens is, as I've already said, you, you get these people trying to Christianize everything and trying to force their religion on people who aren't interested in it. And that's the problem. That's, that's, that's what gets my goat. And I don't think we need to do that. I think, I, I think we, for many people, even if you're not a Christian, I'm sure you've seen this, um, we're trying to, to do things in a political way or a commercial way when the church has always been a spiritual organization. Like Ephesians 6, right? It's a great chapter in the Bible. It goes on about how Christians need to put on the armor of God and it uses like a soldier's armor to depict spiritual virtues. Like the, the you wear the belt of truth because we value truth and you put on the boots of the gospel of peace um, and the shield of faith and things like that they're spiritual things it's not um, the weapons and then it goes on in Ephesians 6 after talking about the armor to say that the weapons of our warfare aren't carnal meaning they're not worldly or they're not human they're spiritual 
um, and they're not there to take down like governments or rule the world politically. They're there to change the world spiritually. And the weapon, those weapons, well, it's a metaphor. We're not really trying to hurt anyone. But those weapons are things like prayer and love and hospitality and fasting and the spiritual gifts and giving and generosity. And Jesus' teachings of love, faith, hope, compassion, mercy, forgiveness, they're the things I, th I think Christians should be using to to change their world, you know, to take back the world for Jesus is their, is the phrase that I've heard bandied around a lot over the years. Now, and it always sounds oddly militant, like, like yeah, there's some military language in the Bible, but it's being used as a metaphor for a, for a spiritual battle, not a political, military, or cultural, or commercial battle. We're not trying to hurt people, we're trying to bless them, and we're trying to serve them, like Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Um, he didn't tell. He didn't judge them for having dirty feet. He washed their feet. Um, and by the way, if you don't know, like back then, everyone walked around and wore sandals, so your feet were just filthy, dirty all the time. And washing feet was a job only for servants. And even amongst servants, it's the job no servant wants. So you give it to the new guy or the young guy or the one everyone hates or, or whatever. Right? It's like the low. It's like cleaning toilets. It's the cleaning. It's, it's like you work at a bar and at the end of the night, you pull the short straw and you got to go clean the toilets and pull the drunks out of the bowl and out of the trough and clean up their spew. It's, it's that job. Uh, and yeah, Jesus, I don't think ever really asked us to correct non-Christians just to serve people. And the weapons of our warfare just aren't, they're not violent, they're not military or political or financial, they're love faith hope giving as all that stuff I've already mentioned uh, and I, I think when you when you live that way that's what really really changes things because we've all I don't know I think we live in a problem I'm kind of bored of the church militant and triumphant I don't think it changes my life I don't think it changes your life um, I think it gives us the reputation we've got uh, and, and that's not good because Jesus wasn't Jesus was a revolutionary teacher of his time people would leave their jobs and their homes and follow him out in the out in the Palestinian wilderness which is not a comfortable place to go for a walk um, but people would leave their homes and just follow him around because his teaching was so good and go around doing his, his healings and forgiving sins and miracles like and Christians aren't known for that well to be fair in, in many places they are but in many they aren't and for everything I've said just now I think that's why but anyway so this game is I, th I think I'm there so look I've got yeah I've got all the almost all the bases on the map all but one or two no I've got them all and from this point you just keep sieging their fortress it takes a while to kill it to be honest um, you just keep making these guns and push in and win. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's growing all the time. And this is a 2 vs 2 version. There's a campaign as well, like a single player. Uh, go get it on Steam. Uh, thanks for listening. And if you liked my video, please subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.
lovely people. I mean, I am one of them. I try not to be a jerk myself, but but why why are they so why are they such like why do they make you feel so bad and guilt trip you all the time that's what I wanted to talk about and I think there's a lot of reasons for that and I think I, I think it, it's if you don't know what I'm talking about well, you probably do but like you may have transformed and then we fight and the grey base is a neutral one which neither of us have taken over yet yeah and you shoot stuff and it it's fun uh, nearly dead Damn. Anyway, and that, that whole the whole thing of Christians needing to correct you, even if you're not a Christian, right? I I don't think that's how Christians were in the and you um, make see that's me making stuff. You can make tanks and soldiers and things, and uh, you make lots of them and you run around and you fight the other guys and you'll you'll see it. It makes sense and you win by destroying the other fortress. Anyway, I wanted to to ask the question: Why are Christians so judgmental? And not all Christians. I should be fair. A lot of Christians I know are love. Hi there, internet. Good morning, afternoon, whatever the uh, time might be where you are. Today's game uh, is a lovely title, known as Air Mech, as in Air Mechanic, Air Mech, whatever. It's like Transformers, so you've got like, I'm in a helicopter now, and then, but you've got planes, and they transform into like walking versions. You'll see me do it in a sec, I hope. I've come across people of faith or of a religious nature who are very uptight. They want to correct you or judge you for your life, or specific behaviors in your life. Um, or they need to comment on social issues and be the be the moral police of society and that whole that whole th thing of Christians being yeah see I've transformed and then they